Greetings, family. Greetings, everyone. If you are new to this channel, welcome. I'm Advocate Pulling. In this channel, we teach. This is a teaching channel. We teach the Word of God. We teach on pearls of wisdom. We also teach South African law. And in this month of October, we're going through the book of Proverbs, one chapter per day. Today is the 24th, and therefore we are going to look at uh, chapter, I mean, yes, chapter 24. These are some of the wise sayings that um, the author of the book referred to when we were reading chapter 23 yesterday. And um, in this chapter 3, he says, there are 20 saints which I have written from you. Actually, he, ref he refers to them in chapter 22, I beg your pardon. Chapter 22, verse 20, he says, I have written down 30 saints for you. They contain knowledge and they contain good advice and they will teach you what the truth really is. So he started with those um, 30 saints in, um, in chapter 22. He mentioned 13 of them, and um, we picked up on those saints also from uh, chapter 23. And now in this chapter, 24 we are starting with uh the 20th saying and then the last one which would be um a saying number 30. now let's go through the word the word here says don't be envious of evil people and don't try to make friends with them don't be envious you know evil people when you look at them when you look at their lifestyle, it seems as if they are prospering. It seems as if they have it all. But now here the Bible says, don't be envious of them. You know, for me, if the Bible says something, I take it very seriously. I take it literally. And yes, of course, you will also receive some revelation revelation on the issue but if God says don't envy them I will not envy them and don't even be friends with them don't befriend people who are evil you have to choose your friend you know there's a video which I have recorded on how to choose your friends that you should choose your friends cautiously not just willy-nilly because you know if you read the word in psalms chapter one um from verse one it says happy are those who reject the advice of evil people who do not follow the example of sinners or join those who have no use for god so in other words, it is clear that you have to choose your friends cautiously and don't allow evil people to be your friends. Don't associate with them. You know why? Because the Bible says they cause troubles. They cause troubles and all what they ever think about is trouble. And every time when they open their mouths, someone is going to be hurt. You know why? Because they are always planning. They are always planning how to destroy someone. They are always gossiping and assassinating people's character. Even when they talk to you, in some instances, it's even a trap because they would listen to how you will comment to add on what they are saying, even if they initiated it. And then later they will go and quote you. Such people are very dangerous. You know, for me, I am very scared of people who talk too much, 
who have no restraint, people who will be telling you, so and so said this, so and so said this. They know all the news. These people, they qualify to be news readers or to be newsletter writers because they know all the news and they are busy telling you, this is what they said. This is what they said. Let me tell you something. The same way they are quoting other people, after you have spoken to them in confidence, they will go and tell what you say and therefore exposing you and therefore impeding on your character because you thought that you told somebody in confidence only for them to go and expose you. So be very careful who you choose as a friend. You know, there's a say that says, show me your friends and then I will tell who you are. So sometimes even if you can try to pretend the types of people that you associate with are a reflection of who you are. You cannot be a friend of evil people. You cannot be a friend of troublemakers if you are not one of them, if you are not backing them, if you are not supporting them on the background. You know, even if you are not evil, the Bible says bad company corrupts good manners. So even if you started as a good person, you will end up in bed because of the company that you keep. It's even worse for a person to try and make a friend with somebody that is struggling with the same issues that you are struggling with. For instance, if you are drinking and you, you want to quit drinking, you cannot continue to be friends with people who are drinking because they are going to influence you negatively. They are not a positive influence in the decision that you have taken. Therefore, the Bible says being wise is better than being strong. Yes, knowledge is more important than strength. You know why? They say being wise is better than being strong. Because after all, you must make careful plans before you fight a battle. Before you fight a battle, you need to be wise. You need to come up with a strategy. You need to come up with a battle plan. And the more good advice you get, the more likely you are to win in that battle but only also in the affairs of your life. That is why the other day I said, you know, there is success in the multitude of, of counselors, in the multitude of advice. That is why I said, get yourself a mentor in, any, in every area of your life. It doesn't have to be direct contact. You can be reading books on a certain aspect that you need to grow on, that you need guidance on, that is indirect mentoring. Some of your mentors, some of the people that you look up to, you will never meet in life. You can meet them through their writings. You can meet them through listening to them, maybe on YouTube, Facebook, or whatever. So this is how you get yourself the many counsels that we are talking about. Because the Bible says, wise saints are too deep for stupid people to understand. They have nothing to say when important matters are being discussed. Have you ever seen people who are shallow with due respect? When it is time to discuss serious issues of life, they will just remain quiet. When we talk about beauty, when we talk about fashion, when we talk about celebrities, they will have a contribution to me. But when it comes to deep issues, deep conversation, they have no contribution to me because they have not informed themselves. Oh, they are not well read. They are not well informed. You know, the other day I was 
discussing education with one of my friends. I was saying to her, you know, education, it's not just certificates. It's not just the degrees that you have acquired. And I'm not saying this to downplay the role of education, but I am trying to say there are people who are more successful even without the degrees that some of us have. There are some people that are educated even if they've never been to college or they have never been to university because why? They have informed themselves. They went out of the way to gather information on a certain area and therefore they can contribute very well when a discussion is made on those issues. So self-development is very important, especially in your area of expertise or what is supposed to be your area of expertise. I know that I said it the other day and I want to say it now. You cannot say you are a Christian if you don't read the word, if you not visit with God, if you only wait for Sunday for the pastor to preach to you. The Bible continues to say, if you are always planning evil, you will earn a reputation of a troublemaker. Any scheme a fool thinks up, it's sinful. People hate a person who has nothing but scorn for others. I don't know but about you, but for me, it is a big turn off. If I sit in the company of a person who always has something negative to say about somebody, Again, let me repeat what I said earlier on. As much as they are saying that about that person, when you leave their company, be rest assured that you'll be the next culprit. And they're always planning evil. That's the reputation that they will earn for themselves of being troublemakers. The reputation because they are schemers. And that scheming, they think, foolish things, any scheme a fool thinks up, it is sinful because it is how to destroy somebody, how to lie, how to cheat, how to destroy, how to be conceited. It continues to say, if you are weak in a crisis, you are weak indeed. You know what? The true character of an individual is displayed during a time of crisis. Who you really are is displayed or exposed when you are pushed to the edge. You know, somebody once said, some other people, when they are angry with their children, they'll be saying, yeah, you know, these children, they can bring the worst in you. No. Nobody, including your children, will bring out the worst in you. What is coming out under crisis, under pressure, is the best you. It's the real you, rather. It's really who you are. You are just being exposed. It's like somebody once said, it's like when you squeeze an orange. Before an orange is squeezed, we don't know what is inside the orange. But as soon as you squeeze it, the contents come out. So in a crisis, the real you comes out. So if you are weak in a crisis, you are weak indeed. But if you are strong in a crisis, you will remain cool-headed. You lift up your shoulders. You will cry later. You challenge the problem head on. You challenge it. So you have to be strong in a crisis. And one way of being strong in your crisis is by building yourself up in your most holy faith. It's reading the word of God. It's strengthening yourself in the word of God. So that when that bad situation, when that crisis come, 
your trust is in the Lord. You are strengthened in the Lord. You encourage yourself in the Lord. You know, one of my favorite verses, it's in Psalm 112, which says, when he hear bad news, her heart is settled because her trust is in God. If you trust in God, no bad news will move you. You know, recently I was going through a situation where somebody will be calling me and we're going through this situation together. They want to hear, what do I have to say? I have nothing to say. Because if I tell you statements of faith, you may not understand. So maybe please just give me a break for now. Give me time to encourage myself in the Lord. Give me time to know, to do what I know best, which is to encourage myself in the Lord, which is to have my heart settled and not be moved and not be shaking because my trust is in the Lord. Because he lives, I will see tomorrow. He is in my future because greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. The Bible here also says, you should not hesitate to rescue someone who is about to be executed unjustly. You may say that it is none of your business, but God knows and judges your motives. He keeps watch over you. He knows and he will reward you according to what you do. You may never be in a situation in your life where you witness somebody being executed or about to be executed unjustly. But let me give you a very simple scenario of where in your presence somebody is giving false witness against someone. Or as they say, where somebody is trying to throw another person under the bus lying about this person as a believer what do you do do you just sit there and keep quiet yet you know the truth the bible enjoins you and i to speak up don't be silent in the midst of injustice it may not necessarily be a person being unjustly executed but it may be somebody is being bad, bad mouth. Somebody is being discredited. What do you do? You just sit there and you have the correct information and you do not correct the situation. God expects you to open your mouth to defend that person, to correct that wrong information. Just You can just respectfully say, this is contrary to what I know. What I know is, and then you speak the truth. There is a reward for that. God will reward you because one day it will be you people trying to bad mouth you. You will not be there when there is a need for you to be protected. But you know what the Bible says, his glory is your rear guard. That is why I like a prayer that says, God before me, God besides me, and God beneath me, God behind me. He is a God who will speak for you. His glory will be his rear guard. He will speak for you even in your absence. And that is why we also have to do it for other people. It continues to say, son, eat honey. It is good. Of course, honey is good. You see, God is even concerned about what we eat. I told you yesterday, he's concerned about our health as well. And it says, and just as honey from the comb is sweet on your tongue, you may be sure that wisdom is good for the soul. Get wisdom and you have a bright future. Indeed, wisdom is good for the soul. 
Because if in life, if you make wise decisions, your life will not be troubled. But people who keep on making stupid decisions, people who lack wisdom, they make decisions which are not right, which are not wise, and they land in trouble. They spend the rest of their lives firefighting because they are making too many mistakes. They are making too many mistakes in different areas of life. And this is causing them headache. This is causing them pain. Some people who are not wise, who do not gather wisdom, they are in situations, terrible situation, crises that they are in because of lack of wisdom. It's all because of the decisions that they make every day that lands them in trouble because they do not have wisdom. The Bible says, if you do not have wisdom, ask God for it. We are asking for wisdom this morning in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. May your wisdom lead us and guide us, O oh God, in Jesus' name. And may we have bright future because of the wisdom that we have acquired and that we continue to acquire and that we are asking for this morning in Jesus name. The Bible continues to say, don't be like the wicked who scheme to rob honest people or take away their homes. No matter how often honest people fall, they will always get up, but disaster will destroy the wicked. So don't be like them. That is why you cannot even friends with them because they rob people. They rob honest people, their heart and money. They even rob them, their houses. That is why destruction is in their future. Disaster will destroy the wicked. This is what the word of God says. They may think that now they have warned, but they have not won. You know, the sad part is this wicked people. They are even in the church today. Some of them, they call themselves pastors. Some of them, they call themselves prophets. They are busy in so-called what they call churches. I call them shrines. They are busy making demands from people, asking people to plant seeds, telling people that God will reward them. Poor people, they are taking their heart and money. Some of them in my country, I know they have been robbed of even their pension payouts. Imagine you have worked so hard for so many years and you get your pension payout. You want to come and stay and, and, and relax and enjoy this heart and money only for this money to be demanded for by this wicked people, by this false prophets who are demanding people to be giving them seeds. Let me be honest with you. If you're not going to like what I'm saying, I am very sorry. You don't owe God nothing. God does not want you to give him anything for him to bless you. You have been freely given. Jesus Christ has died for it all. He is the seed and the word of God is the seed. Don't allow yourself to be, to be, to be robbed. God does not want you to bribe him for him to do it for you. God is a father and he is a generous father. The Bible says also, don't be glad when your enemies meet disaster and don't rejoice when they stumble. The Lord will know if you are gloating and he will not like it and then he might not punish them. So do you want God to punish your enemies? When you see them meeting disaster, don't be excited, don't rejoice. Just leave it to God so that God will complete the punishment. But if the Lord sees you gloating over their downfall, the Bible says he will not like it and therefore he might not punish them. The other versions, verse says, don't let evil people worry you. Don't be envious of evil people. 
a wicked person has no future, nothing to look forward to. Yes, we said it when we start in the beginning, that don't look at them. Don't be envious of them. They don't have a future because what they have now, it's temporary. Whatever they has they have acquired, it was acquired dishonestly. So it will not last. Let's wait for the future and let's see what will happen to the uh, wicked. You will say one day, yeah, God said it. God said it and pulling I had her preach in the wood. She said it, don't let evil people worry you. Don't be envious of them. They have no future, nothing to look forward to. Now, another verse is have reverence for the Lord, my son, honor the king. Have nothing to do with people who rebel against them. That is against God. And here it's telling you again, the type of people that you don't want to keep as your friends. It's people who don't have reverence, reverence for the Lord, who don't have deep respect for God. It's people who don't honor the king, who don't have great esteem for the king. So as children of God, we are enjoined to revere God. We are enjoined to honor the king and don't have nothing to do with people who are rebelling against them. Don't go with people who are rebellious against the leadership. Don't have nothing to do with them because such people could be ruined in a moment. Do you realize disaster that God or the king can cause? God has the power. The king in this earth has the power. The leadership has the power. They can destroy you. They can cause disaster. He says, do you realize the disaster that God or the king can cause? This is as far as verse 22. I will leave the rest uh, for you to read to finish this chapter today as you learn. I hope you have learned a lot and may the Lord bless you. If you haven't subscribed, please do consider to subscribe. Join the family. Please like the video. Press a like button and also share with your friends, your family, and your colleagues. May the Lord bless you. Thank you.